Okay. And, and I definitely didn't know that backstory, so thanks for sharing it. In terms of management, um, do you ever walk away from artists? Do you ever say, yo, it's just no chemistry here? Or is for you, whether it's chemistry, it's no chemistry, this is a job, I do my job, and that's that? No, I, I think that management is, is too difficult if it's, there's no chemistry. For me, it's too difficult if there's no chemistry and stuff. But management, I tell people, like boxing. Styles make fights. You know, um, some artists, y'all styles are going to gel. It's going to work. Y'all going to have a chemistry. It's going to go. You go seven, eight albums like me and Outcast. Y'all worked together for 13 years. You're Dana and Latifah. Y'all been together 30 years. Like Shaka and Luda and Jeff been together. Some. Sometimes y'all hit and y'all just go. Sometimes you work with an artist just for a cycle. And a cycle is one album period, if you like to think of it. It's like they hire you, you drop the album, you do some touring. And if it doesn't do what they thought it was going to do, they blame you, you get fired. Some artists have had eight or nine managers because it's never their fault. And they're always switching managers. And if you know, you know. For me... Because of Flavian, I was able to come into management from a position where I never had to make decisions based off of needing money. And and I, I and every manager should be like that because what happens is if I'm managing you and I'm on my own and I need to pay my bills, I might take a show so we can get some money in that may not be the best show. My decision is being influenced by the bills I need to pay. But when you got at least a base salary and your bills are getting paid, then you can go, I'm not going to take this one unless they come back and I'm going to hold for this number because I need to up my group's number or I need to be on this stage instead of that stage because it's a better look. Now you're making decisions that are pure, purely intelligent management decisions. You're not making decisions because you have to pay bills. And what I've done in, in most of my career is I haven't had to be in that position. And in times when I've had, I've been in that position where I find myself making decisions, I don't like doing it. It's just not me. It's not, to me, I'm a purist when it comes to management. So that's not pure management. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how, that's my chip on my show. Like, I want to make the best decision for my artist, even if it means me not getting in this half million dollar check before Christmas or before Thanksgiving, so I can, me and my family and everybody can have a great Christmas. But nah, we ain't vegging off this number we say we need. And if that means we got to start again on January 16th, then it'll just be a slow fucking Christmas. That's how I'm built. Everybody's not built like that. Different managers, look, I'm getting get my check in for this nigga changes mine. And I got stuff I need to do for Christmas. Everybody's different. I'm not saying that I'm any better or any worse. But for my, the way I've always managed, it's been about being able to make the best decisions for the artist. Also, being able to look at myself and be totally, totally honest about what I believe the talent can and cannot do. I think you have to be very realistic about what you believe the heights of that talent can go. And can you get it there? Some artists you meet, that's just going to be a gold artist. Gold, you can eat, you can feed your families, and if he's not a pain in the neck and he's going to do the work, some gold artists have been the best artists to work because they're not difficult. They know their role. They stay in their lane. They do what they got to do. Some artists have had three or four managers and have acquired a bunch of bad habits and think they can talk to you any old way or think they can pay you when they want to pay you and think they just going to wild out. And then you have to go, hold up, hold, hold up. Wait, first and foremost, I'm a grown-ass man. Like, we're going we gonna to start with respect, or we're going to stop right here. And I think that never letting my integrity be for sale, never ever feeling like any one artist is more important than I am in the equation has allowed me to move the way I wanted to move. It's not ego. It's just, like, some people say, if you've done it, do it again. Show me. I've done it over and over and over again. When I say I've managed artists, I'm saying I manage the artists that you grew to like. I'm not, some of my managers, you already knew they were, but most of them, I'm the reason why you got to like, grow and like them. So I know I'm not somebody that could only manage one artist. I know I can manage five or six artists at one time. I can take one artist from the bottom to the top. Like, so it allows me to speak with a certain confidence. 
and a truthfulness to myself. It doesn't make any sense if you think that you could be the greatest artist of all time. And I think you could be the greatest artist of all time. But the reality is you're not really that great. So now we're about to spend a bunch of time beating our heads against the wall instead of one of us being realistic and going, he could be a really good, like, this artist. So let me maximize his talent in this lane. Anthony Hamilton, for all his talent, is never going to be Bruno Mars. Correct. So for Anthony Hamilton to maybe go in tomorrow and start trying to make a bunch of Bruno Mars type records and stuff wouldn't benefit Anthony. Not to say Anthony isn't the most talented or as talented as Bruno Mars. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's differences that are out of either of their controls that give one an advantage and other not. You know what I'm saying? Like just the reality. Anthony's team needs to know how to maximize who Anthony is and, and what he can do and make the most out of that money and career and talent. Same way Bruno's people are doing for him. And I think good management has to always be able to look at their artists and be realistic with who their artist is, who the, what the artist is capable of really doing, and then really assessing, can I get it there? Because there's also no problem with needing help. If your experiences can only get you through here and you're not sure that how to wiggle something, sometimes you can do a co-manage. Give up a piece of your pie to make your pie bigger. You ain't got to give your artists away. Just make the pie bigger. And sometimes for certain artists, that's worked. Nobody's known that there was a co-manager. Irving Azoff does it all the time. Somebody calls him, needs some help. Irving puts his arm kind of around him, helps them navigate, makes the artist bigger, takes a piece. That manager still looks like the star. So it's kind of, you got to figure out the style of the artist you're managing. And as a manager, adjust your game to it. And never forget that you work for the artist. Listen, at the end of the day, no matter, at the end of the day, I always work for Alcas. I've always worked for him. I'm, I'm basically an employee. People look to you like you're the boss. I'm, I'm the boss of their business, but I'm technically not their boss. And if you understand that, and you also are able to keep in mind that it's a business relationship as much as it's a friendship. Look, when you're a good manager and you're a manager with your artist for six, seven years, you know who the family, you learn the kids, the baby mamas, the girlfriends, the best friends, the cousins, everybody. But one day they're going to fire you. And that friendship is going to be, you know, tested. <laughs> and you have to figure out, you know, where do you go after that? I've had artists that fired me three times because they've come back three times. And now we in one of those in-betweens where I'm not fired, but I'm not hired, but they call me for stuff like, relationships are going to, with age, you're going to grow and you're going to change and you should mature and you should be able to navigate um, the changing in the relationships that you have with people. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move and I'll catch you all on the next video.